question about uh, the COMPI project uh, and its predecessors, just a few words. So, um, COMPI is about top level, national level, even international level, collaboration with schools. Nothing new, of course. Uh, but uh, my, uh, my feeling is that it's getting more and more intense because, of course, we cannot live in an ivory tower in Hakaniemi in Helsinki, where we have our agency, but we have to be where, where the schools are, where the kids and teachers are, and that's why we have been running several projects with schools. And as Irmeli suggested in her uh, presentation, the co-curriculum work is being carried out with schools all the time, even today where, when we have the commenting uh, pages open for everybody on the net. So uh, with me, uh, you remember Jussi's uh, presentation earlier today uh, when he explained about the uh, collaboration of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, and the sector of education in Finland. Uh, I'm glad that he saw uh, it in a variety of ways taking place and getting also more intense all the time. So uh, we've had collaboration with the foreign ministry since 1995, Lisa, isn't that so? But this major project we've only had since uh, the, well, for a few years. And the first uh, uh, endeavor was Global Citizen and the Media. Christina, our chair, was also involved and one of the inspirators there, Lisa, was involved. And it was, of course, about the role of the media uh, and the kids in school, 11 schools, basic education there. And then the famous MASO, or the uh, As a Global Citizen in Finland project, which already uh, is known by a lot of you. And the uh, famous symposium of 2011 has been mentioned already several times. We had 15 schools there, uh, basic education and upper secondary general education schools. And now, presently, we are running COMPI, or Schools as Development Partners. The COMPI word comes from koulut kehityskumppaneina, schools as uh, development partners. Good Finnish uh, lesson in a nutshell for you. Nice if you like to pronounce it as well. Kompi is like, it, it's a music term, musical term. It's the beat, the rhythm of, of a melody. So it, it's a nice acronym for the fine project. And so schools, of course, should be, uh, and they are in key role as the implementers, testers, developers. Internationalization is my big task, and then for uh, global education, as they can be seen and inter interpreted in the core curricula and in the local curricula. These two books, or the pictures of books, are from the present uh, core curricula. Uh, the green one is basic education, and the blue one is uh, upper secondary general education. Uh, where is Nina from Simo? Yeah. I think every day we try to interpret these two books, how internationalization is, has been written into them, and how global education is there. And schools in their reality, are, if they are interested in internationalization and global, global education issues, they interpret these books and they uh, work through their own local curricula as well in the way these two big themes have been written into those present documents. This is a very obedient and nice nation Finland is, so what is written in the norms we try to follow, I think. And so uh, through uh, a lot of projects and practice, uh, schools and obviously we administrators also have been finding out uh, the 
cases, the, the issues that should be developed and increased perhaps, written and done in a more efficient way. What lessons learned should be carried over to the next curriculum. Now you already know this book and it's available here. It has been available since 2011 and it's the famous schools reaching out to a global world, the big, nice, beautiful document of the previous global education exercise. And uh, Lisa knows, I know, uh, this book has been read in a lot of schools with care. So that already, it's like, it has been like a predecessor for the new curriculum in the way uh, global education has been interpreted in this book already. So this is sort of intermediate phase towards the new curriculum. A good tool with a lot of beautiful pictures, uh, theory and practice. And the new curriculum then, I'm saying curricula because I'm referring to both the basic education one and the uh, upper secondary general education one which is coming up soon. So, um, and Perhaps you remember that um, Lisa already pointed your attention towards this green big sentence there. I think it's so nice. I'm, I've been in the internationalization of education business for so long, and I have been waiting for a sentence like this. this it will be in the norm. Now it's okay. Now we have to do this. Uh, we, our schools are becoming real agents of change for the world, for the good of the world, nationally and internationally. Every little school can be a real change agent internationally. It, it's so, such, such a promise of real good challenges and good work. And then more about COMPI, which was uh, the key issue of my presentation today. So, Remember COMPI, Koulut Kehityskumppaneina Schools as Development Partners. We have a beautiful logo, as you can see. You have been looking at the pictures, the slideshow, which has been running on the screen uh, during the breaks, reflecting both the logos uh, and the uh, photos from, from the school's projects from all around where they have been working with their partners in development. And so what is COMPI all about? Why did we launch a project like this with the Ministry for Foreign Affairs? Well, schools have practically always been interested in working with third countries, with the third world, um, but it's often mainly about helping those poor people, those poor kids out there somewhere. In a way, it has been very much a one-way street only. A more uh, challenging issue, uh, development partnership uh, is uh, one of the eight issues uh, of the um, Millennium Development Goals of the International Community and of the UN, and something that is not so much of the focus of an interest. It's uh, eradicating poverty, it's about providing education to all kids, so on and so forth. Those are much more famous, and there is process among those, but uh, development partnerships, that's something perhaps too vague. And that goal is not so far gone so far. So in our small little Finnish way, we can be part of promoting a great big millennium development goal. I think that's very handsome. Lisa and I, we have been very proud about our tiny role in, in helping the UN with the millennium development goals. And so also we are very proud to have noticed with the help of Jussi Karakoski from the foreign ministry that uh, through our COMPI project we can promote our government's 
Devel development policy program, the official one now uh, on board in Finland, in a variety of ways, we are helping uh, with the role of bringing all kinds of st stakeholders into the picture. Schools and their partners promoting collaboration with third world countries. And then last but not least, um, for me, as the overall internationalization of schools, COMPI is a link in between uh, the regular internationalization and global education. What I mean with the regular is like schools are mainly interested in, in having projects with European countries, for example, Nordic countries. They love to have visitors from all over. Uh, they like to promote even internationalization at home, which is a key thing for many schools who cannot send all their kids, of course, abroad. A variety of things. And then global education, the more sort of noble, bigger issue. Comp is a link in between those two areas. And what is then the regular internationalization collaboration that we run, and which is like my main task at the national board. So it's a global education projects and activities related to global education are a big part of what schools like to do in internationalization anyway. So we have so the mainstream approach, they're already in a lot of schools. And then the regular internationalization has been able to provide both theory and tools for internationalization. Uh, tools meaning uh, guidebooks, uh, money, people, networks, my colleagues Arya and Tina, please wave your hands. So it's people who nationwide help schools internationalize. The money is about a million a year for schools international projects. So we are able to bring somehow the money also into the picture to help global education to proceed and develop in, in our schools. And so we have, uh, Finland is a small country, we don't have too many schools, so it's able to have, uh, to, uh, we have in a way established national networks already in between schools and active teachers of, uh, who are interested, in it. no, excuse me. So uh, we have already linked people and schools to a great big part with the help of CIMO, the Center for International Mobility, our partner in internationalization. Uh, we have in our in regular international activities created a portal called POLKA. I won't explain you well what the acronym really stands for, but it's easy to remember because it's like the dance, a website. I'll just quickly show you how it looks like. This is it. And how do I... Yeah. It's a portal about internationalization in schools in Finland. And there are also <laughs> tweets running showing you what is actual. I, I'm trying to show you another. Okay, but this is from here anyway. And then famously we have here something that's called Compi again. Just a quick show. It's rather pretty, and you already recognize our logo. It's so far all in Finnish, 
there will be a summary in English, I'm sure. Uh, this will be partly in Swedish as well, as we have Swedish partners in Kompi. A lot of information about our project to be found here. So uh, this Polka portal has been, it was actually Lisa's idea, so that we provide this portal as the home basis on the net for the Compi project. And so it is. Just a little bit of information, data on, on Compi. So we have 13 schools from primary to upper secondary levels. And they all run their own projects, and they have partners in three, 13 different uh, countries, mainly in Africa, but also Nepal and Vietnam. They are all ODA, official development uh, assistant uh, countries, so that uh, they qualify as, as development partners for the our schools. And as I mentioned, we op operate also in Swedish. We have a group of Swedish speaking schools in our network of Compi. Money information. We are grateful for the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs for the 200,000 euros that we have got from them to run Compi. Not a small sum of money for two years. We have joint seminars, mind you, webinars, quite successful ones. We are sustainable in that way. And then we have the website I just showed you, and we are obviously going to have a publication sometime towards the end of this year on the net again, as we are very modern in our ways nowadays. Uh, the other map shows you where in Finland the schools are. We have high-level coordination. We have a steering group uh, with wonderful people with top offices. So, so we are in good hands. And we have a professional graphic designer, and we have an editor. We have Heli. Heli Niska over there. Please wear your hand. Heli is responsible for the beautiful graphic outlook of Compi. And where is Taria? Daria Repo, who is our journalist and keeps on writing even about the symposium here. So be careful of what you say. <laughs> Photos are also being taken. Everything will be on the net very soon. But it's all professionally done, so don't, don't worry too much. And then don't remember to check all the posters here in this room. Uh, representing the COMPI activities in those uh, 13 schools. And we have, where are our COMPI people in the audience? Please stand up kindly. Yeah, so we have Mikkeli, Urpo there, we have Hamelinna, we have uh, Vammala, Sastamala, we have Vesilahti, we have. Um, Jyväskylä, Lyseon lukio, we have uh, Espo, Kuninkaan Tien lukio, we have Turku, the famous former capital of Finland, represented by two famous schools. Uh, this is not all the schools, but they will come here later tomorrow and, and the day after. And please don't forget to take a good look at the posters here. I'll just show you quickly what, this is very complicated, this is tough for me to understand, but this is in a way derived from the, the policies of, for uh, development cooperation from the Ministry for Foreign Affairs and other important documents. The one which is the most meaningful for me is the last one, communication should happen also 
through other means than words, because it's schools, it's even very young kids communicating with each other. So we are trying to find other ways to communicate than text, text, text in the old complicated and official sense. I think we are finding some very nice approaches there. This is Lisa's famous flower, the competencies of the global citizen. We are trying to explore these elements through compi, finding, finding perhaps even new petals for the flower. One might be that issue about communicating through other means than text. We are asking the schools, of course, to report to us. Let's see if there is something exciting there. Mm, no. But we have to do this, and we are very hopeful that uh, this is part of the documentation where we will find well, information and theory about what development collaboration really is about, and then we can sort of upscale that, those findings and report even to, to the Ministry for Foreign Affairs and even perhaps to the United Nations who have not been so successful with their approaches with the development partnership issues. I wonder if our schools are finding the reporting exciting. I, I hope it's not too tiresome, though. Nobody's even nodding. Yes, that's, that's how things. But there always has to be bureaucracy also in the world where, where there is taxpayers' money available. Okay, so this was more or less a quick run through of the COMPI project, the practical side of, of the uh, education of global citizens at the moment in Finland. So thank you very much. <laughs>